What's up you guys, Bloody Jacob here to finally bring you a review of the first Godzilla film Gojira which came out in 1954. What's up you guys, Bloody Jacob here, meeting my icon Catherine Isabel. Hey, I'm Sylvia Saska. And I'm Jen Saska. And we're the Saska Sisters. And of course, here to try and make Godzilla more of a presence on my channel, as he should be. Uh, I just did an X Plus figure review, I did a Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2 movie review, and I'm going to periodically be uploading more Godzilla movie reviews as I make my fiance watch them with me <laughs> in the coming months and such. So, uh, you know, Godzilla, he's always. Godzilla was my hero as a little kid, uh, you know, since I was almost a baby, I've always loved Godzilla, and to this day, Godzilla is still probably one of my main passions in life. <laughs> um, you guys know how much I love film in general, and, you know, how attached I get to my TV shows, and Godzilla's right there with all of it, specifically. Um, so, yeah, I figured it was more, more than about time to uh, finally talk about the original film. Um, finally rewatched it. Uh, with the fiance, I had her watch it because she was actually curious about the original film. Um, this is the DVD copy I have. It's pretty nice. I'd like to have like some kind of Blu-ray of it, but this is a really nice case. Um, and it comes with a little booklet and everything like that in it as well. I'll show you that in just a second. Don't worry about that. <laughs> sound there. Um, but yeah, it comes with this little booklet inside it. Let me show it in the back. There's actually a lot of notes on the film in it as well, so if you see this copy, I do think it's very well worth it. And it comes with both the uh, original Japanese version and the, of course, the, uh, the American one, Godzilla King of the Monsters with Raymond Burr, if you really want to watch that one. <laughs> um, but I don't really need to explain the story of this movie, or at least I don't need to, uh, you know, read a Google sum upon the movie like I usually would or something off of IMDb. Um, you guys know, it's... Uh, Gojira was a really different film compared to the rest of the franchise. Yeah, you know, I want to say it's like um, you know personally my favorite film of the franchise. You know, it's but it's uh, very different, um, and you can't take anything away from it. You know, from a few, from a pure enjoyment standpoint, obviously I'm gonna like other movies more, but this is undeniably the most important and sort of uh, dense, you know, and uh, relevant film in the franchise. I think um, still to this day, and that's because it had a uh, you know so much in the way of uh, theme with uh, the misuse of atomic weapons, especially around that time period, and it's still uh, kind of a daunting warning for today. And no, not literal. It doesn't mean if we keep using bombs, you know, arrogantly, that a giant uh, monster is going to rise from the waters and destroy everything. <laughs> um, it's, more, you know, it's more common on humanity, commentary on humanity, and, uh, you know, just behavior, and uh, just... You know everything that's happened at that time and still could you know to this day um you know it's a very dark you have a uh, dr sarazawa um dealing with uh you know ptsd from his time in the war um and you have conflicting views on godzilla when he does actually show up um probably my favorite actor in the film though is uh yeah. okay i lost the cast list for a second okay yeah Takashi Shimura um, as uh, Dr. Yemi. Um, I'm butchering these names, I apologize. Um, I think he is my great actor in the film. He's sort of the professor that's uh, kind of more disagreeing with their uh, you know, straightforwardness of just deciding they should kill Godzilla. 
Um, and it's funny because, uh, you know, Dr. Sarah's I was obviously the one that's created this weapon and he's dealing with uh, whether to uh, use it to uh, help or not because if it gets into the wrong hands and what will we as humankind really do with that sort of thing. Um, you know, with the oxygen destroyer. Um, but it's funny because you see in the 2014 new Legendary Godzilla movie and the 2019 film uh, King of the Monsters, um, you have Ken Watanabe, who did really well as that Dr. Serizawa for what he was. But you can kind of tell he is sort of like a mesh of uh, 54 Serizawa and uh, Dr. Yamane here, um, played by, uh, again, Takashi Shimara. Um, so I thought that was actually kind of cool. But anyway, um, and you see a lot of the uh, devastation. I mean, you could, especially for the earlier parts of this movie, you could just not have it be Godzilla at all, and you could just see the reactions of what these people are going through, their trauma, their dread, their you know, devastation with all this. It could just be more warfare, and it would be a very similar type of effect and uh, look. Um, so I thought that's still really impressive to this day. Um, and of course, when you first see Godzilla pop his head over the hill like that, yeah, you could say it looks a little silly, but still a very cool, iconic image. And for the time, I do think the suit actually does look really good. Uh, I thought they did very well with it. Um, you know, with that really kicking that sort of thing off. Yeah, you had King Kong, but they didn't go with the stop motion thing. They made all the you know, entire suit out of it, as elaborate as that is. Um, all the miniatures and everything, it's still really impressive in this film. Um, in Godzilla's main rampage that goes through in the city, uh, it's still very, very iconic to this day. I still you know, just uh, kind of grin watching this again. Um, I remember even seeing that image in a book I used to have at my elementary school library. Um, it was like this orange, you know, horror movie monsters book about Godzilla, and it'd have you know, black and white pictures in it. You know, through a lot of his early films, and there are one, there are books like kind of like The Wolfman and Dracula and Frankenstein. Such so those are cool. <laughs> I wish I could look those up if I remembered what they were, you know, what their uh, company was exactly or whatever. Um, but just so cool. And then you have a shot, you have shots like this, uh, almost give off like an eeriness to it as well, and almost kind of, uh, kind of get that cryptic, you know, warning that they're putting over as well at the same time while you're seeing a giant monster rampage through the city. And you know, now some of it, you know, I can like uh, nitpick if you want. Um, like you know, Godzilla's atomic breath, it's more of a mist in this film, um, and you see kind of how it melts, you know, uh, metal and you know different uh, electric electrical uh, towers and stuff like that, and you know tanks, and you know make some houses blow up and some buildings. Uh, sometimes I feel like they could have made it look a little more devastating, though. I mean, because sometimes the things just slowly melt, and it's not really that destructive looking. Um, obviously, so it's a job done, but I feel like they could have had things be a little bit more kind of just, uh, you know, crumbly with uh, what, it, or, you know, just have things more easily destroyed with what Godzilla is doing with that. Uh, but still a very, very, you know, cool scenes where he uses that. And I know this isn't going to be the greatest video on this film. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of videos and different articles out there exploring what this film actually did, but you know, I'm doing my best here. Um, and then when they have the idea to electrocute Godzilla to death, that's you know that most iconic scenes in uh, franchise and movie history, I think. Um, oh man, I, I can't say enough about this film, really. Like I said, it's not my personal favorite, it's just like a different type of... Uh, mode you're in when you go to watch this compared to really any other film in the franchise. Um, you're not just here to watch like an entertaining uh, monster romp or something like that, even though I do connect with the Godzilla character more than that. Um, and obviously with the Showa era, you know, it became a lot more kind of kid-friendly and campy, you know, uh, especially a couple movies later. Um, but this still holds a very special place in this, this launch. Uh, I think it's still, yeah, it, it, yeah, it is still the longest uh, going movie franchise in uh, in history. Um, and it very much deserves it for uh, starting it the way it did. Um, you have uh, the iconic score, you know, music. Um, I know his name. I just, I'm just debating if I want to butcher, butcher it or not. Um, but you guys know who I'm talking about that. The score is absolutely incredible in this film. It's iconic. It's legendary. Um, and you have the director, Ashiro Honda, um, who still directed by uh, many accounts to be you know, some of the best films in the franchise. Um, you know, he went on to direct uh, you know, a portion of the other films in the, in the Showa era. 
Um, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna try it. It's Akira Fukabe, um, you know, the composer of this. He just did wonders, and uh, you know, it tells you because 2019, the Godzilla King of the Monsters. I, I love that new film, you know, um, you know, so much, and they you know recreated that and uh, did a nice kind of updated version of it too. And you see that carry over, you know, um, you know, almost 70 years later. That that tells you, man, this movie was incredible. Um, I just can't really say enough about this. Uh, it's very simple. It's not maybe not the most exciting, but you know, you kind of gotta know what you're watching going into it. Uh, but it does what it does so well. And uh, you know, sure, there's there's a couple things that maybe haven't uh, aged quite as well with it. You know, some of the acting or some of the effects here and there. But you still gotta still gotta admire just how much effort and attention and detail is put into it at the time, I mean, even from that practical standpoint. Um, you know, there and there's a uh, you know very uh, capable you know, decent acting performances in this movie, too. You know, don't watch, don't watch the, the dubbed uh, American version. I guess you can if you want to, because um, I always remember seeing that version at my uh, video rental store, you know, when I was younger, but definitely watch the original Japanese version. Um, you know, I, I'm not really sure what to rate this movie, because like I said, I don't enjoy it necessarily as much as a bunch of other films in the series, but... Yeah, I think it still did wonders what it was, so I'm still giving it like you know somewhere in the ninety percentile. <laughs> um, you know, definitely within like a you know B plus A minus range objectively. I think I think it still holds up well for what it did. If you if you're very aware of the film you're watching, um, not very casual going into this. If I think oh this is boring or yeah. but any I think any serious film goer um, or you know film fan or critic or anything can still recognize a lot of what this film did that. It's kind of uh, timeless, I believe. Um, so yeah, let me guys stop about Gojira 1954. Um, you can even talk about you know, King of the Monsters uh, American version if you want. Um, you know, what are your favorite scenes in the film? How do you feel about the themes today? Do you think they're still relevant? I think they really are. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, let me guys stop. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.